so in this lecture we are going to discuss about uh, ideals so let me write the title ideals okay so before knowing ideals now all of you should know one small thing called as a subring so what is a subring a subring is nothing but a subset of a ring which is a ring in itself okay uh, which is a ring itself so it is just like subgroup it's a ring so here you have a ring here and here you have a smaller uh, set which is a subset of that ring okay and that s and this s is also a ring with respect to what addition and uh, scalar multi and multiplication sorry okay so r has also the operations addition and multiplication so the same operations the subset s will have and that set will also form a ring in itself so that will be, that is called a subring so we want to study some special types of subrings okay and those subrings will be called as ideals so let us see some examples so if i have a ring r okay and suppose i take the ring to be integers with respect to addition and usual multiplication okay then if i write a subring what is the subring of r i will write 2z so 2z is first first uh, first of all it is a subset of z and 2z with respect to addition and with respect to multiplication itself forms a ring so this means that 2z is what is a subring of r uh, is a subring of uh, z so in general what can i say in general if you take any nz then you know that nz was always a subgroup of z so in similar fashion nz is uh, what for any n, n nz is always a subring of z it means i am mean, looking at smaller sets now okay now let us uh, define what is the meaning of an ideal so what is an ideal of a ring r so firstly ideal must be a sub subring so it is a subring such that it has a special properties means that ideal must be a ring in itself first of all it should be it is inside the ring okay i and it should be a ring in itself means it should be a subring and what property this ideal should have this ideal should have a property that if you take uh, any a in r okay so if i take a point a inside the ring uh, i okay and you take any element in the ring r so you're taking any element now this uh, little r is anywhere it can be inside also it can be outside also okay so for the time being i'm showing it outside the set i okay this r may be inside also so this r can be anywhere in the ring it is free to be any element in the ring but a must be an element of i so for any a in i and any r in the ring so this r may be inside i it may be outside i the following must hold what is that property that a into r this multiplication and r into a this multiplication both multiplications are different because the ring need not be commutative right if the ring is commutative then ar will be equal to a r a okay so if a is in i and r is in r then a into r must be this multiplication must come inside i and this multiplication should also come inside i so r into a should be also inside the set and uh, a into r should also be inside the set so both these elements have to be inside the set so no matter where this r is r may be inside outside wherever that r is i the multiplication of a and r that has to come what that has to come inside i so if this happens 
okay if i has this special property that if any person inside the set and any person which is arbitrary fl floating anywhere in the ring if i take their multiplication ar and if i take their multiplication ra the multiplication is pulled inside okay the multiplication will not go outside so it is actually what it is pulling all the multiplications inside the products are pulled inside the set i or they are absorbed inside the set i okay then this i is called as ideal and therefore another name for ideal is that ideals are also called as absorbing sets because they are absorbing what because they are absorbing the multiplications ar and ra okay if r is a commutative ring so if i am talking about a commutative ring what is the simple thing that will happen if r is a commutative ring then an i is an ideal okay of r then i don't have to check ar and ra both i will just check ar in in i because if it is a commutative ring then ar will be obviously equal to what ar will be equal to ra and therefore ra will automatically become an element of r so you just have to check one condition if you if the ring is which type of ring if the ring is a commutative ring okay now let us take one example of a ideal so which which ring you know the ring that i have told you just now is z plus dot do you know a subring yes we know a subring what is the subring of i any n z is a subring of i so suppose i take two z okay so this is a subring okay is it an ideal how do you check that is a is it is i an ideal so just take one element in 2z just take any element in z so suppose i choose an element a in 2z suppose that element is even number which is of the 2k and if i take any any integer outside suppose i take m is any integer now m may be a m may be even odd so m may be inside m may be outside okay so i don't worry whether m is even or odd so if i multiply a into m what will happen it will become 2k into m so which is two times k dash right this product is k dash so this means that this a into m is is what is even number so this means that a into m is a set of, is in which element the product is what the product is in so a was somewhere here and m was somewhere so a m has come to be in the ideal i which is 2z do i have to check m a no because i know that this ring is which type of ring this integers is a commutative ring so this automatically will mean that m a will also belong to i and therefore 2z will become an ideal of 2z is ideal of z okay what is the speciality of two here there is no speciality so in general i'm trying to tell you that if you take any nz okay then it is always an ideal of ideal of z right i hope you understand this suppose still let me tell you suppose i take 3z instead of 2z what will happen if i take any element in 3z that element will be of the type 3k and if i take any m in z then that m is an integer so what is a into m a into m will become what 3km which is three times some k dash so this means that am is a multiple of 3 and therefore am will become to am will be an element of 3z and similarly ma will also be a multiple of 3z and therefore 3z is also what is also an ideal in j in in this and therefore you can say 4z is ideal 5z is ideal and therefore you can claim this statement that in general nz is always an ideal of z okay let's take one example now suppose i am taking the ring is i'm taking real numbers okay i'm taking a real set of real numbers and the subring that i am going to choose okay the subring that i'm going to choose is the set of integers okay now is first question is integers a subset of real numbers yes so this means it is at least a subset okay is this a ring yes is this a ring yes so this means that z is firstly a subring of z it is a ring which is inside the set of 
real numbers now the question is that is z ideal of r so let's draw a picture so if i take z here z contains of all integers and real numbers are here which is a larger set okay i'm going to choose an integer a and i'm going to choose any real number okay and do you uh, think that if i multiply any integer by any real number does it again remain to be an integer is that possible so if i choose a equal to 3 and if i choose r equal to say i choose r equal to 2 upon 5 okay what is the multiplication of 3 and 2 upon 5 it is 6 upon 5 is it an integer so 6 upon 5 will go outside the set of integers right so this means that a into r is not an element of z so the answer to our previous question is no z is not ideal of r what is the reason we will give a counter example so choose a equal to 3 and choose the element r equal to 2 upon 5 you can choose this element r anything if you even if you choose root 3 even if you choose any anything you will do okay i'm just showing you an example of 2 upon 5 so what is a into r a into r is what 3 up into 2 upon 5 which is 6 upon 5 and therefore a r a into r does not belong to z now a uh, 6 upon 5 is not an integer it's a rational number so and therefore i don't have to check the condition that r a is in z or r, r a is is there or not because once one condition is failed i don't really have to check another condition but if i choose an or uh, choose, choose a ring to be the set of real numbers with respect to addition and usual multiplication and if i choose the ideal i to be the set of rationals inside the real numbers the first question is is the set of rationals a subset of set of real numbers yes means it is a at least subset fine is is the set of real numbers a ring yes it is a ring with respect to usual addition multiplication we have proved that rationals is also a ring with respect to usual addition and multiplication so the question lies that is the set of rationals a, a, a ideal is it an ideal of real numbers okay so again let's take help of a picture so if i go inside a ring of real numbers okay and rational numbers are sitting inside it which is q which contains all fractions okay so now what are rationals rations are all elements of the form p upon q where p and q must be integers and q has to be a non-zero integer correct so i will take an in element six upon five and i will multiply it by what i will multiply it by suppose root three is a real number then this a which is six upon five and this r is root three so this will tell me that if i take the multiplication of these two elements then the multiplication will be six root three upon five which is not a rational number why it is not a rational number it is of the form p upon q yes it is p upon q form but the denominator but the numerator is not an integer right numerator and denominator both have to be an integers so it is uh, a into r a upon a into r is not a rational number this means that set of rationals is not an ideal of what it is not an ideal of the set of real numbers okay now let us go to one very important properties of an ideal okay so let me state that property so i have an ideal okay let me just explain you first i have an ideal and I, uh, which is inside a ring r okay and this ideal contains an element of contains a unit okay u is contained inside that ideal what is u u is a unit okay then uh, this ring i am the, the ring i'm considering is a ring with unity now uh, i hope everybody understands the the difference between unit and unity what is a unit unit means something which has multiplicative inverse what is unity unity means multiplicative identity which is denoted by what which is denoted by one so this ring is a ring with what ring with unity means somewhere one is there okay now where that one is there 
one is a unity where is it one is there one is inside or one is outside i don't know right now okay but the ring is a ring with unity so i'm taking a ring r with unity right and uh, what is an uh, so i is what i is an ideal of the ring and it is such that you a unit is inside an ideal unit u is in ideal means means this ideal contains an element which has a multiplicative inverse okay then what can we say about the ideal i okay what can you say about this ideal i now it is very easy to understand this now what you know is that u is in the ideal correct and uh, u is a unit therefore u must have a multiplicative inverse therefore u has a multiplicative inverse and and that multiplicative inverse is say v okay so u multiplied by v has to be what u multiplied by v has to be unity now this u is in the ideal but where is v v can be anywhere v can be anywhere in the ring not necessary that the multiplicative inverse has to be in the ideal itself okay so that v could have been anywhere v can be inside also v can be outside us i don't have control over v i have control over u only because u is in the ideal so this means that this uh, u that we're taking this u is in the ideal and this v is any element in the in the ring r okay and i know that this i is what this i is an ideal therefore by definition if u belongs to the ideal if v belongs to the ring where must the multiplication go the multiplication must go where the multiplication has to go inside the ideal because this is the definition of an ideal so this means u into v has to be in the ideal and therefore what is u into v u into v means nothing but one so this one has to go inside the ideal so what we have uh, what important conclusion we have found from this is that if i have a ring with unity if r is a ring with unity i was not sure where is one lying but one thing was given to me that this ideal contains what contains some element which has multiplicative inverse in that case i can 100% declare that the unity of that set the one this is there this one has to be inside the ideal it has to sit inside the ideal it cannot sit outside the ideal therefore what can i say is that first thing is i will say this that i is a subset of r means the ideal is a subset of r why because it's an ideal ideal is a smaller set so i has to be a subset of r the second thing i can say is that if i take any element r in the ring so they so let me go in the picture see r is any any element in the ring okay let me take it purposely outside okay then what i will do is i will multiply this r by one what if now where is one one is in the ideal so r is in the ring one is in the ideal so by definition of ideal where must the multiplication r into one go in which set must this multiplication go this set this set this multiplication must go in the ideal because that is the definition of ideal this means that r belongs to ideal therefore when i see this three lines carefully i understand that i had taken an element r in r and eventually i am declaring that that element r belongs to i this means that r will become a subset of i taken any element in r it is becoming an element of i means this set r has to be a subset of i therefore we declare from these one and two we declare that the ring is a subset of ideal ideal is a subset of r means the ring has to be nothing but ideal in correct language i will say that this ideal is nothing but full ring okay so this important conclusion we wanted to observe that what is the 
result now can i write it in simple words i have that r is a ring with unity and what i i is an ideal which contains a unit contains some unit means a element which has inverse then if this is the case the ideal has to be nothing but the full ring ideal cannot be a subset of a proper subset of r okay so this means that this i is actually nothing but it is equal to the full ring itself it cannot be properly contained inside the ring like this okay as this condition aisa nahi hoga okay i will slowly slowly start capturing everything and eventually you will see that this ideal and ring they will become the same in this case what is the condition what what should i contain i should just contain what it should contain one unit element therefore as a consequence of this we can now say that what are the ideals of field what are the ideals of field right so let so so let so let me take one field let f be a field okay now this field i'm drawing f okay i'm drawing a double f okay and i'm doing going to take a ideal which is non zero ideal so let i below i be an ideal of f and that ideal is say is not singleton zero i'm not taking one single set so it contains some elements okay it should contain some elements and this is zero element zero is always there in the ideal because it is a subgroup so it must contain identity okay now i'm going to take since it is a non zero ideal i will take one element u and let u belong to ideal now this u is not zero correct this u cannot be zero okay i'm i'm, I'm choosing a u which is non zero sorry and uh, since this u belongs to ideal if u is sitting inside ideal obviously u is sitting in, inside f also because i is a subset of f so u belongs to the ideal and ideal is sitting inside the field this means u also must belong to the field and u is non zero and what is what is the meaning that u is inside f what is the definition of field every element is a unit every element has a multiplicative inverse so this means that u will be a unit because in field what is the definition of field all non zero elements have multiplicative inverse this is the meaning of a field every take any non zero element you must get the multiplicative inverse therefore u is a unit and since u is a unit and u was basically an element of which set u was an element of i this means that by above result i can now say that if you have an ideal which contains a unit that ideal must be equal to whole ring that ideal must be equal to nothing but the whole field so we have found out that if i am given a field and if i try to find out a non zero ideal of that field that ideal will not sit like this it has to expand and it has to become the full field so it cannot be a proper ideal right so there are only two options left with us now so what are the only two ideals of the field the only two ideals of the field is that either take the ideal i is equal to singleton zero either take it this if you take to be non zero ideal then it will become what it will become directly a full field so this means that a field has only two ideals what are the two ideals the two ideals is that either the ideal has to be singleton zero or the ideal has to be the entire field as an example what are the ideals of set of real numbers now real numbers is a field therefore what are the ideals so the ideals are 
the, there are it has only two uh, real numbers have only two ideals what are the ideals ideal i is either singleton zero or it is full real numbers these are the only two ideals so how many ideals does a field have a field has only two ideals do we know any other fields yes we know what are the ideals of what are the ideals of rationals only two ideals singleton zero and rationals itself because rationals is a field what are the ideals of complex numbers again complex numbers is a field so the i it has only two ideals zero and complex numbers full what are the ideals of zp where p is a prime again we know that zp forms a field if p is a prime so the only two ideals are what zero and zp itself and therefore this now instigates a question to us that if p is not a prime if p is not a prime okay then what are the ideals of zp okay so so let me take instead of p let me take if m is not a prime number what are the ideals of zm so we must be able to find what are the ideals of z6 what are the ideals of z8 now they will not be singleton 0 and z8 itself because uh, they are not fields okay so if it is a field then you will get only two ideals but if it is not a field then you will get more than two ideals these two ideals will be 100 percent there but other than these two ideals you will be able to find some more ideals okay